This tiny little board is a zero network node for an Otis elevator. And it's designed to control, in this particular instance, uh, four of these illuminated buttons. So you basically got a little button, you press it, and it will actually then illuminate the button and your call is in. Um, but it's quite interesting, the construction of it, and it also seems to be using a proprietary network system. So let's take a closer look at the circuit board in a larger scale, because I've already blown it up. Not actually, I've, I've actually not managed to blow it up physically. But this is what it looks like on the front. This is what it looks like on the back. Goodness knows what it looks like inside because it's a multi-layer circuit board and that is quite frustrating. But on the back, uh, basically speaking, it's the uh, in this area, it's the button filter inputs. And the rest of it is largely, I think, the network control, which uh, is very, very hard to trace. But let's take a look at the circuit board itself and what's on it. So I'm going to zoom down a bit. It's kind of interesting. It's very typical of an industrial application. This area is covered in conformal coating. It's not an attempt to hide the numbers. It looks like numbers have been scrubbed off, but in reality, it's just they've put splooge all over this. And the reason they've done that is probably for stability, because sometimes these modules get operated in humid environments or, or in a wall where water drips down onto them. And one of the problems in that is that if water drips onto the circuitry here and causes problems, particularly around the oscillator uh, area, uh, if it caused the processor to glitch or crash, it could actually pull down the entire network and uh, just basically stop all the landing buttons on every level from operating. Uh, this, incidentally, the four buttons, If in the case of, say, for instance, the LOP, the landing operating panel, you'll just possibly have one of these. Uh, but in the case of the car operating panel, the COP, you might have a stack of these clipped into a little frame or a version with a lot more channels, depending on the brand or, you know, depending on the manufacturer and their, their particular preference. I did notice the Chinese were selling a version of this that looked basically at the one uh, network connection and power connection, but it had stack, it had multiple sets of these and it had a repetition of this chip. This chip, incidentally, uh, what's the, the number on it? It is GAA310708A1, and it appears to be uh, a microcontroller, a PIC microcontroller, but it's been custom programmed with uh, Otis's own code and it's been given their part number. On the white connector at the side, we have the two zero bus connections. I believe that the uh, RSL, the remote serial link network, is based on RS-485 voltage levels, but I'm not 100% sure about that. It, it appears to be using Otis's own protocol. I thought it was going to be CAN bus. I was looking for a CAN bus chip. I don't even see an RS-485 driver, and I have to say, because this is a multi-layer PCB that you can't actually see both sides, simul well, the, the interior layers, it's made it very, very hard to to trace out. I'm, I may give it another go, but it's also, I had to put my little super extra thin gold probes, the stabby needle ones on, but trying to actually probe on one side while probing on the other side is extremely difficult because the probes still, you know, slip off the components. It just, it's been, it's been frustrating, particularly with those hidden tracks. But the supply comes in, 30 volts, uh, has a transient suppression diode here, a polarity protection diode here, uh, there's some other filter capacitors, but here is the electrolytic capacitor that's used just to basically provide a stable local supply. That is then used to generate two 23-volt supplies. I'd guess that the standard is probably 24-volt, but they've nudged them down by one volt. Um, and although they've got two regulators, I think they've just split the load between two regulators because each one is doing two connectors and that's it. Except this one, which has a little resistor coming off through a diode network, and then it's coming down, it's going to another regulator, the TL317, they're all 317s, uh, which is local uh, programming to set it for five volts. The only other chip here on the microcontroller is an LM393, which is a comparator, which is like an op-amp, but it's designed for decisive voltage comparisons and uh, a sudden logic transition. Um, the buttons, they've got a couple of uh, local uh, smooth capacitors for those 24-volt supplies. They have basically 
on the pins here, they've got uh, the zero volts. They've got the input from the push button, the 24 volt output from the regulators. And then they've got uh, an output to drive the LED. The output is switched by this little MOSFET, uh, which uh, is driven by these four pins here. The microcontroller, incidentally. Uh, I was trying to work out what it was. I've not deduced what it is yet. Pins 1 and 14 are negative. Pins 2, 3 and 4 are positive. Uh, and pins 28, 27 and 26 are the crystal. Um, I shall cut to the chase. I'll go straight to the schematic. I'm not, I've not drawn the whole thing out because A, Otis would probably get quite miffed. Uh, and uh, also, uh, it would take a, a very long time. This uh, is the addressing switch here. This sets the address uh, where it is on the network. Anything else worth looking in the back? Not really. No, there's nothing worth looking at the back. Just uh, those two resistors and that capacitor, and each cluster of these is uh, the switch filtering, which I shall show you. So here's a basic. This is just showing the power. This is showing the inputs and the outputs. It's not showing the network. So you get the 30 volts come in. There's the transient suppression diode, the transil or transorb. Uh, there is the diode for polarity. There's the smoothing capacitor, and there's the two regulators. In reality, these regulators, they're not just fixed voltage regulators. They're variable. So they've got a resistor divide, resistive divider actually setting the voltage in each of these two 23 volts. So that also lets them custom program the voltage on these. Then there's a little tap off through a resistor and diodes to the little 5 volt regulator. It provides a 5 volt supply over to the microcontroller. The microcontroller, and I got this wrong, this, I drew what I was expecting, a resistor and a NPN transistor. In reality, let's just draw that in as what it is. It's a N channel MOSFET, by the look of it. And the output goes straight to the N channel MOSFET. Um, it's quite odd. The, the MOSFET is called, what is it called? I did look for it. Uh, QG, that doesn't really help. When you do a search for MOSFET QG, you find that QG is an uh, abbreviation for gate charge and is, therefore appears in many data sheets. It's a terrible name for a MOSFET for finding it. But anyway, it looks like a little MOSFET. So in the microcontroller, one, when you push the button, uh, here's the three pins in each of those outputs. The uh, button actually bridges. It doesn't use the zero volts. I guess that's just an optional available thing. But it bridges the 23 volts to the... Uh, input pin, the button pin, that is then goes through goes through a 20k resistor to limit current, and it forms a potential divider with this 4k7 to bring it to a level that the microcontroller can safely handle. There's also a decoupling filter capacitor to remove any noise because there's always a risk that uh, you're going to get well electrostatic discharge for a start and also pick up electrical noise from uh, cables run the vicinity of say lighting cables for an illuminated panel or other stuff. Uh, just uh, any wire acts as an antenna. That uh, provides filtering, but there's also another layer of protection with a little A7 diode, uh, which is, uh, I'll show you it in the drawing. It's there, there's one next to each of these uh, inputs. And that uh, means that if the voltage exceeds the supply rail by about 0.6 volts, it will conduct to the supply rail and vice versa from the zero rail. So that just stops it going well beyond the range of the microcontroller. But it is well current limited anyway, but it caps that voltage. And that just filters that input. When you press this button, when you press the button, it sends a signal to the microcontroller. It says, you know, a button has been pressed. The microcontroller most likely then uh, sends a signal on the bidirectional serial network. Uh, which it will have to actually command uh, attention to that. I think it jams it deliberately just to get the attention. Uh, it's similar to the canvas, but it's not canvas, I don't think. Very strange. Uh, but uh, it sends a signal back saying the button has been pressed and if everything is norm working as normal, if it's not working as normal, it won't light. Uh, but it sends a signal back to the microcontroller that says turn on the transistor and it turns on the LED. That's fundamentally it. I have, you know, for such a simple thing, it controls four buttons on a serial network. I have spent so much time. I wasted so much time trying to find that chip before someone pointed out that it looks like an Otis number because uh, I mentioned it in Patreon. I said, uh, an idea what this is? And they said, yeah, it fits in with a load of Otis uh, sort of part numbers. And it did turn out to be that that was the case. But an interesting little thing. 
I do kind of want to reverse engineer the driving of the network, but that is quite a lot of work to do, um, particularly on the multi-layer board. And uh, in a way, you know, I'm so used to, to me, RS-485, even bi-directional, like say, for instance, uh, RDM, remote device management of like the theatre equipment lighting, it just uses a bi-directional RS-485 in interface. I'm not sure why they've uh, chosen to do go, go with their own proprietary standard. Because it, it, it's not like when this was designed the, uh, in 2003. Uh, it's not like, you know, Canvas or like RS-485 wasn't established by then. Although it might just be harking back to an older standard. Uh, Otis do seem to have a patent on this communication protocol that seems to be sort of a proprietary thing that they designed, so it may have actually happened. Knowing Otis, uh, certainly old Otis, they were quite inventive. They were always a bit pioneering. They were always sort of ahead of the crowd in uh, designing new stuff. So it's possible that this is just a standardised network that dates back to an original design of when electronics was really just coming in and microprocessors. But it's interesting. It's a typical example. It, it seems, well, I'd expect. It's, it's Otis. It's going to be well-designed. But um, it's got all the sort of protection and inputs. It's got the, uh, strangely, not so much the outputs, but uh, ultimately probably just saying, well, it's a MOSFET switching LED. What could go wrong? Um, but uh, it's interesting, like, dividing it through the little two little voltage regulators and then another one tapped off that for that. I'm guessing the reason they chose 30 volts is because this is going to be a, uh, power and data cable coming down the shaft so they went for a higher voltage although this thing only it doesn't take that much current the button hold on let me just uh, light the button up again uh, at 23 volts it's only about 8 milliamps this button takes mm. but uh, this thing here only drew about 13 milliamps in its standby state with just uh, the microcontroller running but that's it that is the uh, Otis RS14 uh, network node for controlling the call buttons in the car and in the hall um, or for some other applications I'm guessing as well but it, it's quite interesting it has matching displays and uh, controllers that will also use the same serial network but uh, the one thing it can't do is replace the safety is like say for instance the switch switches in the shaft doors all have to be hardwired right back to the control panel so that uh, you can't rely on a data for that it has to be a hardwired network so if a door gets jammed open it's a very decisive uh, uh, signal that you know the lift shouldn't move because the door is uh, currently in a unknown state but there we go interesting stuff